In the last section, we added on our ipcrenderer.send function to the add videos action creator. Remember that this action creator is a part of the Redux side of our application. It is a function that gets called whenever a user drags and drops some number of videos onto the UI and then submits it. So we're now sending over this list of videos to the electron side of our application, which is going to be responsible for determining the video length or the length of each one of these videos and then sending that back over to the React and Redux side of the app. Just to make sure that we're handling everything correctly, for right now, I want to add a listener on the Electron side of our application and then console log the list of videos that is provided. So I just want to make sure that we're serving the correct data over to the Electron side of our app to start with. To do so, let's add our event handler to the index.js file at the root project directory level. So inside of here, we need to import the IPC main event bus off of the Electron library. So let's start off with that. We will require in IPC main. Then underneath the app.onReadyCall, we'll add in a listener to listen for the videos colon added event. So we'll say IPC main dot on videos colon added. And then add on our event handler as a second argument. Remember that the event handler is always called with two arguments. The first one is the event object, which describes a little bit about the event that was just issued. And then the second argument is the actual data that we're communicating to the Electron side of the application, which is going to be our list of videos. So again, for right now, I just want to console log out the list of videos and make sure that we're getting the correct data to appear here. So we'll console log videos and just see what we're working with. Okay, let's start up our Electron application. So at the terminal, I'll execute npm run electron. That gets our application to appear on the screen. I'll then click on the screen anywhere to get the file picker to appear. I'll select some video file. I'll hit open. And it looks like over here in the terminal, we got our console log to appear. So you'll notice that it is an array with one object inside of it. So first thing to keep in mind here is that a user can very easily select multiple videos at a time to be converted. So that's why this thing is an array. There might be multiple different videos in here that are pending conversion. And we're going to need to make sure that we fetch metadata for every single one of the videos that is provided inside this array. Now the actual object itself looks pretty familiar. It looks a lot like the, the object that we saw in the first application we made in this course. We have the file name, a path to the file, the file size, and the actual video format or the video type. So this definitely looks like it has the right data inside of it that we're going to need to fetch some duration for each of these videos. Now speaking about fetching the duration of these videos, again we did this in the first application in this course. I took the liberty of pulling up our source code from that project. So I've got it right here. So this looks a lot like the application we're working on right now, but bear in mind this is the first app that we worked on. So it is the video info app. If you recall, we had that listener watching for video submit. And whenever a user submitted a video, we took the path and then fed it into FF Probe to determine the video metadata. We then took that metadata and sent it back to the website of our application. So this was an approach that worked really well in that first application when we were dealing with a single video at a time. We received the event, we took that singular path, that one path to that single video, and we fetched some details about the metadata around that very particular video. So again, this worked out really well for that first application that we were working on when we were, we were handling a single video at a time. But on this application, on the application we're working on right now, so I'm gonna change my code editor back over. Okay, so here's the application we're working on right now. We're saying that we're working with a list of videos. And so dealing with FF Probe is gonna be a little bit different when we're trying to deal with a list of videos as opposed to a singular video. Let's take a, take a quick break and then come back in the next section and discuss exactly how we're going to handle fetching metadata for a list of videos as opposed to a single video. So I'll see you in just a second.